All right, see, this one's working. So I have to delete the other one. Where is it? I got to refresh. I'm going to delete the other one so you guys can all get off of it here. Oh, where is it? Where is it? All right, we're live now. Weird. Oh, because it, it never logged in. Okay, so I don't have to delete anything. All right, guys. I'll give you a second for everyone to get in. Is this number 64? I wrote it in there. Still waiting for people to get on. One thing you shouldn't do is exercise with a mask on. <laughs> you hear about that person, their heart was working so hard because they were breathing nothing but carbon monoxide when they went running and they were like a trained athlete and uh, their heart just totally collapsed their lung and they died because the heart kind of moved out. It was beating so hard trying to get oxygen to a system. I mean, it makes complete sense not to wear a mask while you run. I see people doing it. I'm just like, you're going to kill yourself. All that carbon monoxide. Yeah, collapsed lungs. Exactly. I know. That's exactly what happens. Your heart just goes and collapses your lung. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the one... Uh, Doctor that was saying in the, in New York and Manhattan, he said, "No, no, no. These people, you know, we talked about this before, but the people are not dying of uh, COVID. They're dying of air, uh, altitude sickness. They're not getting enough oxygen to their vital organs." And so he just says, "Just give them lots of oxygen." I think there's a special mask that uh, really concentrates the oxygen, and gives you extra oxygen or something like that. Oh, dang it! Why is it buffering? Is it? I I have upload speed of 22 megabytes. Let me check again. Downloads 240, 250. Holy cow. 300 megabytes per second is my download speed. My upload speed ran 115. So it's not on my end. Um, unless. Um, okay, we're good in the Carolinas. Okay. Mm -hmm. I only have 17 people on though. I guess everybody's starting to get to work. Well, and also, P 
people don't realize uh, that they had my chat that the one I started a second ago didn't never logged on for me. Um, yeah, I can't wear a mask for well, of course my mask is is cotton and it's double thick, so it's hard to wear the the ones that are the the kind that the doctors wear and stuff like that. Those things are a little bit easier. I think they're cooler. But day sixty four. <laughs> Hard to believe. What is that, Peter? What is that emoji right there? Person cartwheeling. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually can hover my cursor over that. And so, so I, you know, we're going to, um, Vito, are you here? Vito's not here yet. He wanted me to answer a question for him. Um, and then, um, uh, also, uh, a, no, not AJ. It was AB. Uh, was asking me about oh, my favorite open tuning. I think because my open tuning videos are so popular, everybody assumes I play in them. But part of the reason why I think they're so popular is because I'm not a big open tuner guy and open, open tuning guy. And so I tend to make it real easy for people to understand when I explain like open tunings, uh, chords and open tunings and stuff like that. It was actually my first YouTube video, I think was done for my brother-in-law who asked me if I could tell him how to play basic chords in in open D tuning because he liked to have open D tuning on his guitar well he had a 12 string and he liked to have an open D tuning and he really really liked um Dan Fulgerberg was his favorite artist or, um, and so he really wanted to be able to play I think Dan uses open tunings a lot so um yeah oxygen's a good thing <laughs> Um, good. I'm glad the video is doing well for you. So, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Once I see a veto and a B on, I'll talk about that. Um, what the questions were, I think there, I asked if there were any questions. Um, and then, um, as far as, uh, today's lesson, I'll, probably talk more about this hip-hop groove um, And uh, two thumbs. I uh, I did a video. That video I did is still up there. In fact, I redid the video because the video, the original video, I just did for Jeff, and then I made it private and sent him a link. And then at some point, I made it public because um, I needed more material. And then I realized it says Jeff throughout or something like that. And so I deleted it and uh, re-shot it. So that video. I um, mean, I can even pull up the open tunings playlist uh and you can find it in there so it yeah because it's like how do you play an e minor in open d or how do you play b minor in open e or something like that so um uh, that was kind of the reason for that and it became actually a really popular video so i did more of them um and in some cases i did videos where i you know on tunings i'd never even played in before i did the open c tuning um, that was one of my last ones. Uh, where is that one? Is that even in here? Oh yeah. I try open C tuning for the first time. So here's the playlist. There's a, there's a few in here. Um, it says, uh, 15 videos on the subject. So and many of the videos are playing, um, playing, uh, you know, different chords, you know, minor chords and stuff like that in major tunings. It's a little easier when you're in a minor tuning to go major because you can always uh, take that third up one fret. But it's really hard to if you're doing a bar to to get this note. Like if this would be a, in if I was in open D, this would this would be an A chord. Uh, but to make A minor, I'd have to hit this note behind here, and so that means I have to hit. Yeah, it's not really feasible. <laughs> so um, so there's other ways to accommodate that, and that's kind of what I talked about. So. 
Yeah, the F chord. Uh, you know, and there's a there's a good tip too, uh, Bonnie. One thing you can do with the uh, to to kind of get the F chord down is to go ahead and put the capo down at the first fret, and then try playing the F chord. You know, first fret, technically second fret, so it'd be F sharp. You could even tune your guitar down a half step, which would do two things. One, it would allow you to be still be in, on an F chord. So a capo at the first fret would just be E A D G B E. Um, but the other thing is the strings would be a little bit easier to push down because the tension would be less. Um, but you can always put a capo there and then you can kind of start to see if you can get that bar chord down. That's a good cheater way to get started on it. Once you have it down, you can you can go it, you can go ahead and put it in standard tune and take the capo off and try it then. Um, and you'll probably be able to do it. It's just a matter of kind of getting it. It's all about, you know, your elbow and your fingers and, you know, not deadening strings and not pushing down the first finger so hard. You don't really need to put too much energy into it. Cause like an F chord, you're really only pushing down the top two strings and the bottom string. So see, I can even have my finger bent. I don't need to have it perfectly straight like this. I can have it bent a little bit. And that way I don't have to have my, fin my, my wrist so far away from the guitar. But one thing you won't be able to do is if you're grabbing the guitar like this, you will not be able to play an F chord because your, your palm, you know, I've showed you this before. When you spread, you can spread your fingers out like this. But as soon as you bring your fingers in, make a fist, all your fingers want to go, all of them want to go to the dead center of your palm. So if the guitar neck is in the palm of your hand, your fingers do not want to spread out. And so you need to kind of be able to spread a little bit. And that's where getting this, you know, like this perspective makes me look fat. <laughs> so. Thanks, Roger. I had that one guy say I stole his B chord from him. He actually got really mad at me. I had to block him because he was being a jerk. <laughs> so um, I'm like, I, I don't think I ever saw your video. And it's not hard to come up with, take an E chord and go like this. And oh, look, it's B chord. Okay. Uh, but it's really not because you got to mute the G string. And it's not a very useful B chord. I've never used it for anything. Except I have used it. E to C sharp. I've done that on records and stuff, you know. Uh, I guess. I don't know what his deal was. Um, but I I made the mistake of replying to him. And I should have just ignored him. Um, hey, Reed's on. Let's see. Uh, AB's not on yet, and neither is... Hey, Paul. Good to see you, Paul Becker. And Bob Schumann's on, and Dennis... Bonnie with her new guitar, Reed. I saw you're selling a bunch of guitars, Reed. Is it because you want to get other ones? <laughs> I learned, I, I just, I stopped selling guitars a long time ago because I've always regretted. Like I've had many guitars I got rid of that I wish I still had. Or I traded them, but you know, at the time I didn't really have a choice. I needed a Strat, and so I and I so I traded. A, I had a Gibson L5S, which if you've never seen one, look it up. It's crazy. Not an L, not a hollow body. It's it's a solid body. It's like a rich man's Les Paul. I had one of those, and because um, I wanted to get a, a, I had a Les Paul, but I it was a it was a seventies early seventies Les Paul uh, custom, and it was a one of the fretless wonders and played awful. Uh, hated that guitar. It didn't even sound that good. And so I bought this. I thought, oh, I'll get the best Les Paul I could get. So at the time, that was an L5S. And uh, that thing was um, beautiful. Uh, but again, it was the pickups weren't hot. They weren't wired like a. it was wired like basically it was it was a jazz guitar with a solid body. So uh, you look up those things. and They're just crazy looking. They're beautiful. I mean, even the back plate for the you know the electronics are on a Les Paul it was made with the piece of wood they cut out of there or something it's like <laughs> they do this um so that was that was it was pretty cool it was a beautiful guitar uh but it, it didn't really have the gain you would need for a Les Paul so I ended up trading that for a GNL even Steven so I think the store saw me coming and they were like yeah we'll we'll, t we'll take that guitar <laughs> um so <laughs> Yeah, that's, 
Yeah, but you need a Gretsch and a Rickenbacker too, man. What are you talking about, Dennis? <laughs> I just don't, I don't have a Gretsch. I just never get that. I never get that much call for a Gretsch. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, uh, the the uh, yeah, I'm not a big Paul Reed Smith fan. I don't know. Um, I, I I bought a Paul Reed Smith guitar. I was actually wanted to get a guitar with soap bars, and um, I almost bought uh, a vintage, uh, like a '50s SG that had soap bars in it, and then um, just wasn't thrilled with the sound of it. So I went ahead and bought the, I think it was a Guitar Center in in uh, dang it was in Van Nuys, I think, or whatever the Guitar Center on Ventura Boulevard. And that's where I bought my Paul Reed Smith. I got a good deal on it, but <clears throat> I think I had a friend that worked there, so he got me a good deal. But um, it has soap bars in it. It's a McCarty model. It's a beautiful guitar. It's super light. It's a lot of fun to play live, but it's also super noisy uh, because uh, soap bars are single coil pickups. So it's very, very, uh, uh, it's very buzzy when you plug it into gain or anything like that. So, um, but um, I'm here now. I'm here now. Harmonics. So let's see. Is um, I still don't see A B yet. It's so funny. Um, they both had question. Uh, a B and Avito both had questions for me, but they're not here. Right? Anybody seen them? All right. Well, um, let's see. So I was, um, yeah, Gretsch is, Gretsch is, yep. Yeah, Alex has, my son, Alex has a Gretsch. Um, in fact, it was, he bought it from a friend of his that was, was selling it and we both wanted it, but I went ahead and let Alex buy it. Um, and I could borrow it anytime I want if I needed it, if I really needed it. I got asked to be George in a Beatle, Beatle cover band um, for a, a New Year's Eve gig. It paid, it paid 800 bucks. This was, gosh, 15 years ago. Um, it paid like 800 bucks for the gig, but the amount of work I would have had to put in to learning all of George's guitar parts and vocal parts and memorizing everything, I don't think I, I would have been able, A, I don't think I would have been able to do it, but it also probably would, would have not even paid minimum wage by the by the time I did all that, so. Oh, hey, Tom Beck's here. Oh, nice. Uh, American Pro. Oh, yeah, that's a, a Fender, right? The, um, yeah, I saw those at the NAMM show. Really nice. John's here. Good to see you. Leo, Leo's here. Um, gosh. We should. So, um, uh, the, um, the hip hop groove, I'm going to change guitars so you guys could take a sip. It's kind of my main strat live strat. I just had it refretted. Um, that's the third refret or second, second or third refret. This is in drop D. So you can take a sip because I changed guitars. That's one of our rules. Gary will post the rules here in a second. We have a drinking game. If you're new to the channel. Um, it's funny because if, I mean, I can. Now this is drop, double drop D. So I've got uh, the E, the bottom E string down to D and the top E string down to D. And the thing I like about this is, let's see, um, is that I've got, it's kind of like open, the top four strings are like open G. Oops. Let me change. Try this one. So I've got like. But then I've got the the, the uh, power chord on the bottom. So it's kind of like having open D and open G at the same time. So that's why I like this tuning a lot. This 
this guitar's action is a little low for slide, but I've done it if I have to. I'm going back to standard tuning now because uh, I want to talk some more about uh, uh, that what I call the hip hop groove. And it's basically imitating this drum pattern. Which I just programmed. And I made it a little bit. standard now um yeah so uh double drop d um leo yeah so it's just it's just d a d g b d it's similar to dad dad except you have a b instead of a a dad dad would have an a but it's you only you only you only uh tune uh those two down um Baco cat i posted a link to my playlist for uh and there it is again um for my open tunings thing where i talk about all of that because to be honest if i were to tune into open d right now and say okay i would just be figuring it all out again <laughs> so i already figured it out to do that video um but as far as like all the chords and open d stuff like that um i did a song i think i did the video that's really popular um play most any song in open d play most in, any song in dad gad that one's gotten a lot of views. Uh, let's see. Um, I think that one's like crazy. It's like my second most popular, I think. Yeah, 410,000 410, views. And I did it in November uh, 17. Um, the other one, it's so funny because play most any song in open detuning. Um, that one... Oh, that's got 200,000 views. Okay. So that's not bad. I get a lot of people getting mad at me, though. They're like, well, let's you try playing Donna Lee or what, you know, <laughs> try playing, uh, they, they, you know, it's like they, they want the world when I say play most any song. And also, people, there are a lot of people that hated the word most. <laughs> it's colloquial. You know, they were, you should be almost. And I'm like, well, already, the graphic's already there. Um, yeah, Blackwater. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Doobie Brothers and Double Drop D. Um, no worries, no worries, Reed. Uh, the um, yeah, we're doing the hip hop right now, but um, um, so you were Drop D and maybe Dad Gad. Uh, and how chords are made. That's what you want to know about Cat. Yeah, like I said, in those videos, I think there's, if you haven't seen those videos yet, watch those, and those can help. Um, if I have something, you know, I mean, I could do a, one lesson of this, you know, uh, of this series. We could do an open D or something, but maybe mostly just to talk about it. Not, uh, I don't do a lot of writing in open D or anything. I don't do a lot of playing in open tunings. But like, cause like I said, it's like, but people think I do because I, those videos are so popular. Uh, but I just did them because people were asking for them and like, okay, sure. I'll figure out chords in open G, open D, open A. Um, and open A is the same as open G, but everything's up a whole step. So you're, instead of lowering three strings, you're raising three strings. Same thing with open E. With open D, you're actually having to tune down four strings. Uh, e down to D, the G down to F sharp, the B down to A, and the E down to D. So you have to do a lot of work. With um, open E, you're raising uh, the A string up to B, the D string up to E, and the G string up to G sharp. So you only have to do three strings, uh, but the tension is going to be a little harder. Um, but actually, in some ways, it's almost preferred because just then when I was playing slide with uh, double drop D, it was I was having a hard time and it was I was fretting out a little bit. 
And so if you go, if I were to go up uh, to like open E, a little bit more tension means it's a little easier to play slide, I think. Um, if the strings are really, really loose or too thin, they're going to be, it's just going to be hard to get good contact without pushing down so hard. So um, the groove that we're, we're going to listen again, the, I, I, um, I uploaded that piece of paper, which is right here. So I scanned this and put a PDF of this. This is, this is what the hip hop groove looks like. And it, it looks like a complete mess, right? And actually um, that note on the end of three, see, yeah, right here, that note could also be a bass note. You could also, like you do with the first two notes here, you could also hit the bass note. So like, be like, And by hitting bass note, I mean, you know, basically hit the bottom, the bottom two strings. You don't need to be real super precise. Um, and then if you're going to a fifth, five string chord and your root and your bass note is on the fifth string, then, you know, kind of shoot for that fifth string. But I think if you're thinking you can overshoot it and hit the fourth string, it almost makes it easier to hit. If you think you've got to be really precise, you might hit the bottom string or whatever. And like I said, sometimes you can just even aim for the fourth string and try to get the fifth string. I mean, the best way to go is, of course, mute the. If I mute the string down here, I'm muting the low E string down there. Then I can, I can hit the low E string. Doesn't really matter. And really, the the fun in the hip hop groove is those two upstrokes in a row. Right there, that's the fun. That's where it, it's, and so what you're doing is you're imitating that snare drum. Right there. And for a drummer, that's like, it's almost like a ghost note. I could make them even quieter um, on, the, on the drum, you know, programming the drum group. I could make it even quieter, which would make it sound more like a ghost note. You could make it louder too. Like I could go, uh, let me, let me make that. Let me make the, I, the cool thing is I can totally do this here. Uh, I'm just going to loop one bar. So this. Now I'm going to take those two snare hits right there and I'm going to make them really loud. So it's like this. So you can hear. Ah, drummer, a drummer wouldn't do that. If anything, they would make those notes quieter than the normal two and four hits. Remind me what slack key tuning is. I, uh, that's um, for the Hawaiian lap steel or uh, the Hawaiian, the like the resonator guitars. Um, I forget what the slack key tuning is. Is it not open G? Um, the other thing on the, on the strums, I can really shorten the stroke so I'm not banging out all the strings like you don't have to do that uh, you kind of you can you can have a smaller you can kind of go with a shorter stroke so you're kind of getting more of the middle i'm not even hitting the e string on top yeah actually uh paul i think a lot of the op the hawaiian they would use open a too um i have yeah i have a, a hawaiian an old lap steel fender lap steel that um was probably originally bought for that purpose because that was the that was the thing at the time back in the 50s that was a big thing the slack key players are amazing too the guys that really know what they're doing and that's one of the things they do um that kind of blows my mind is where's my oh here it is 
it won't work on this guitar because it's so uh it's the action is so low on this where's my my foot rest that's weird oh i put it over there okay don't really need it um but they do these they angle the bar to get like this way to get so like so that's a uh, i'm on the fifth fret and that's on the fourth string that's a g and that's an e so that's g minor or, i mean e minor but if i want e major they would do that see you got to really it's it's literally like a 45 degree angle depending on where you are on the fretboard it's a little bit less of an angle if you're higher up but dang but then you can't hit the string in between because that string's going to be like like some weird quarter tone I just don't, I think I would have to have it way out there to be able to get my arm to, because my elbow gets in the way. <laughs> now, oh, you know what? A tuning for, uh, that sounds great, uh, for slack key, you know what they do is they do uh, like a pedal steel tune. So, so I'm going to go drop D, double drop D. You're going to be blown away because this will sound very Hawaiian. Okay, double drop D. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to go to F sharp on the G. So down to half step. I forgot about this tune. Okay, so now it's tuned to a D6 chord. So we have D, I'll write it out. D, A, D, F sharp, B, and D. Okay. So check this out. If I can get, if I can get so you can see. I don't have my foot rest. That sound Hawaiian. Uh, that um, I actually did some Hawaiian tracks for a TV show, and I I, I did. This was a long time ago. I'm just doing the top four strings. <laughs> Hola. You mean <laughs> hula. Again, hard to do this with the... This action's too low on this guitar. We get the idea. So that's that's uh, a very common Hawaiian tuning, and that's D6. You could also go up a whole step on all these and be E6. Um, if you you could do it with open G, um, but I don't think it would sound quite the same. Um, you would basically just do uh, it would be D G and then D G B E. So you wouldn't change the top four strings; you just change the bottom two. Um, I forgot the one I learned for a church, but it seemed they asked me every other month to play it. That's hilarious. Okay, so I'm going back to standard tuning. I'm going to go get my foot rest so you can confirm that I'm wearing pants, which you can tell. Foot rest is over here. <clears throat> And that way I can keep my guitar a little higher up so you guys can see it better. Uh, so I'm going back to standard tuning. Um, so yeah, that fun, listen to that drum beat where I, I, I just... <laughs> That's the kind of the fun moment. That's the what makes it sound kind of hip hoppy. You could do the eighth, the eighth note, bass notes at the beginning. Um, I'm going to put those back. There we go. Um, you could do a lot of patterns that have that eighth note feel at the beginning.
um, but the um, but if you go back and forth between E and E sus just to keep it simple, and that way we don't have to think about what strings we want to hit in the bottom. But. Notice. I keep my arm moving. Mi dentista is muy frío. That means my dentist is very cold. And it's not even right. You're very generous with your laughter. <laughs> um, yeah, Tagalog, 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 how you ever you say it. That's very common here in LA. Spanish is obviously very common. Um, uh, the... Um, yeah, I think I learned four words in Dutch, and I can't remember them now when I we went to Holland a couple of years ago. All right, so... Um, so funny, because I, I was on Discord just like less than an hour before I logged on, and uh, AB and... Uh, Vito both had questions for me, but I have yet to see them on here. And, uh, and that's the other thing. And uh, the 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 uh, and and. Uh, the uh, last two sixteenth notes of the bar, the uh, and of four, um, kind of gets you into the next chord. So that's where you can you can use that to transition. I'm actually, you know, like chord change. So I'm actually starting to move my hand before the next bar. You have to. You really, really, really want to be on the chord, ready to go on the downbeat. The nice thing about this pattern, though, is if you're hitting uh, bass notes, you really only have to have, you've got a whole beat there, all of one, one and, which is basically just the bottom note or bottom two notes of the chord. So if you have to lag a little behind with the other fingers, you can. Yeah, I don't even need, I don't need to put down my other fingers until beat two. So that gives you, that buys you a little bit of time if you're having trouble changing chords, which is probably another reason why <clears throat> a lot of guitar players gravitate towards this feel. Cause it does uh, give you some chance. Yeah, Mark, this is definitely a more advanced uh, pattern, but that's kind of why I like uh, using the E chord um, uh, for uh, practicing strumming groups, because then you don't really have to worry about the bottom strings, uh, finding, you know, playing different bottom strings, and you don't worry, you have to worry about missing any strings. You can... I'm not intentionally thinking of missing any particular strings, but when I am choking down on the pattern, instead of playing with a big, um, a big strumming pattern, or big strumming motion with my right arm. If I tighten it up and do more of a wrist thing, it's I'm going to miss strings. I'm not thinking about what strings I'm going to miss. I'm just missing them, and it doesn't matter. And the counting part of it is only to describe the pattern. The goal is not to count when you're playing it. The goal is to uh, not even think about it, just have it be natural. Um, 
but you need to you need to almost to understand the pattern and to work on it slowly. You almost need to know the math behind it. But there, we've been doing a lot of um, um, patterns uh, in the last um, gosh, how long we've we been doing this? About two weeks now on strums, strumming and grooving where we uh, have been talking about different patterns, basic, basic patterns, uh, where we just practiced holding chords, practiced uh, accenting certain chords. If I had the AB software, OBS, sorry, the OBS software up. So, um, oh, nice. Well, that's cool. And how old's your grandson, Paul? Is he, is he, um, Um, you can, well, for hip hop music, I mean, I call it the hip hop groove because it's that backbeat, you know, it's, um, I don't think it's particularly a hip hop feel when you play it on acoustic guitar, uh, any, any progressional work, but hip hop would be more, probably more minor, but you know, you just have to go through and analyze hip hop songs and find out what's the most common hip hop progression. Um, but hip hop is very, very quoted by uh, pop music. And so a lot of in the when I heard this pattern, a lot of songs that tended to use it tended to start on the six, go to the four, to the one and to the five. So it'd be like. Six, four, one, five in the key of E. If I were to do that in G, it would be start on E minor. C to D, G. Diane. Well, thanks for listening. Sciatic is the worst. Well, probably not the worst, but you know, it, it, it's awful. Uh, like I said, I've had pinched nerve issues in my neck where I lose uh, feeling in my left hand, which is weird because it's been bad at times and it hasn't affected my playing at all. Um, I basically um, uh, it because I, it's there's so much motor memory in what I do, and even if it's not, I can still. It's not like I can't send the information to my hands. It's just I can't feel my fingers. So, um, oh, is that yeah? Drive. So which one? This one. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. Yeah, it does. Yeah, a lot of '90s and even 2000, early 2000s. I mean, I think of a lot of like. Uh, uh, Oh, shoot. Um, I want to say Colby Calais, but it's not Colby Calais. Um, who's the... Uh, oh, shoot. What was her name? Really good record. Oh, when Sonny Gets Home. Uh, who's Who did When Sonny Gets Home? Th that kind of has a feel like that, I think, if my memory serves... But when you're practicing a groove, really what you want to do um, is you want to not worry about the left hand. So you can just play one chord. That's why I like to go between E and E sus, because you can you can hear where one is by changing the chord. That's important uh, because some of the patterns we've done, um, you can really easily lose track of where one is. Uh, we did it with that with the uh, especially with the the uh, free range groove. <laughs> Yeah, Sean Colvin. Thank you, Peter. Um, and that, if you don't keep track of where one is, you might get turned around on it. But, uh, but this pattern... And 
in slow motion. In slow motion. Really hard to tell what I'm doing and when I'm making contact with the strings from this perspective. And that's almost intentional because my goal is to keep my arm moving. If I turn this way, you might be able to be more likely to see actually when I'm hitting the strings. And you're also more likely to see if I, that I've gained my COVID-19. I was trying to work on a fiddle tune the other day. Uh, it's really, really trying to change my picking uh, technique for bluegrass uh, because I tend to I tend to uh, rest my hand on top of the guitar when I'm playing. But I notice most bluegrass players don't do that, and they kind of almost make a fist, and they're so stinking fast. So I was trying to get you know I was trying to get some of these. And I can see, I can, I can really feel how it can get really going really fast. Uh, the hard part for me is memorizing the tune. Uh, I'm just reading the music now, but um, uh, that they will, they're really pretty strict about pure alternating picking. So if they play a chord, if it's, if the song is basically uh, quarter notes or eighth notes um, like this, that would be down, down, Sorry, down, down. So down, down, up, down, up. So like I talk about keeping your arm moving on the strumming, I think they're doing the same thing with their right hand. They just kind of keep their right hand going like this, even if they don't hit a string. practice <laughs> on your time yeah it's down down up but to go down down up you still have to do an up in the middle it's just you don't hit the string so if you're going so, i mean it feels like two downs in a row but it's really there's still an up in there you know it's like if i were to hit two strong It's, it'll take time. And the other thing about bluegrass is they don't necessarily aren't super, super precise about hitting one string. It's okay. A lot of times when they're playing a melody, it's a wrapped around a chord, which is really beautiful. And uh, so if you're trying to be too precise, it won't quite sound as bluegrassy as if you go ahead and, and, and just kind of hit some extra strings in there every now and then. And I'm still working on that. So it's just one of those things where when I'm practicing, which isn't very often anymore, um, that's one of the things I would love to be able to do better is bluegrass. But, um, as far as, uh, I think, Leo, you were asking me about... Um, Hip hop progressions. Um, uh, oh, let's see, chords from a natural minor scale, sometimes harmonic. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, Will generally probably not. Uh, uh, just just uh, alien. So just pure. Not. I mean, 
yeah, you could do harmonic part. That sounds more Spanish, you know, because of that. But. Yeah, the, the the big thing right now is that uh, pat, 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 pat. that's like the big feel right now with pop songs. Uh, uh, let me uh, let me program that real quick. It's just real simple. Uh, let's see. I think this tempo is probably fine. So, oh, this is gonna be too fast. Slow. it um and i'm going to turn down that rim shot or side stick not really a rim shot turn up the kick and do hi-hat eight sixties I don't really hear that much, that kind of busy hi-hat in there. Maybe crap hi-hats on top of it. Um, crap hi-hats would sound like, I don't know, would that work on there? So that would be a, a, a more modern groove. Obviously, it's kind of like the new, uh, so much of um, pop music right now is kind of taking its lead from Latin music um, and Spanish, mostly Latin pop. Uh, let's see. I want to add a drummer. Let's do a hip hop drummer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the just going to have the trap hats in here. So where is that? Right here. So I'm going to get rid of everything but the hats. Ah. And get rid of the fills. And again, I think that, that would this would probably be faster. That's pretty slow for this. Right now, I'm at 85 beats per minute. Uh, and I'm using Logic, if you're wondering. Um, let's see. Let's go. Let's go 100. Uh, yeah, that sounds like it's almost too fast for the traps now. Yeah, let's go. Let's go 90. Like what acoustic pattern would I play over this? See, this is one where I would probably do more of a 16th note of feel. Reggae tone is what it is. Yeah, it's not. It's not Latin so much as reggae tone. Um, uh, and that's so many. So much of pop music right now has that beat in it. You'll notice that hi hat, or not the hi hat so much. That's trap hi hat. But you'll notice the uh, uh, the the rim shot thing is so common, or the the snare hits on on the is it boom, dun, dun. so it's the one e and a uh of one and the and of two one and and then the uh of three and the and of four. Tap tap. Yeah, it's reggaeton, not Latin per se. Oh, it's just Latin pop's been started it. They were the ones that imported first. And uh, and I was starting to get from these British producers back about 10 years ago, I was starting to get requests to do reggaeton tracks. And uh, that was the kind of the first I'd ever heard of it, to be honest. I hadn't really heard reggaeton until then. Uh, yeah, at this point, I'm Ed. I'm doing Monday through Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, we'll see how much longer that goes. Um, as everybody starts to get back to work, the numbers are kind of going down, and um, I've got to, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I got a lot done yesterday again. So my days off, I'm getting a lot done, which is good news and bad news. It's good news because I'm getting a lot done, and it's bad news because it tells me I, I, I'm doing this uh, kind of stops me from working it's kind of one of those things where i'm like oh i gotta i gotta log on in a couple in an hour or two so i better not sit down and try to do too much uh writing uh it's hard when you start writing you get in that zone and I, one day i was 
of our, you know, 60 days of, of lessons in a row, one day I literally was like totally lost track of time. And it was about five till. And I realized I hadn't logged in or done anything to prep work to get ready to do this. So, um, uh, how I, you know, every song is different, but Leo, uh, how I set up drums on uh, every song is different depending on what I'm wanting to do. Sometimes I uh, just put a click on and I play guitar and then I write drums to the guitar. Uh, drummer is great because I can take, uh, like say I come up with a really busy guitar part, very syncopated guitar part. I can have the kick and snare pattern be based on that just by saying, um, choose track, say track five is my guitar. I can say use track five for your rhythm and it'll match what I, it's insane. So drummer it's called just drummer is the name of the software and it comes with logic. I don't think you can buy it. Oh, Paul, stop it. I don't think you can buy. Uh, um, I don't think you can buy it separate from logic. I don't think there's a way to do that, um, but I'm sure there are other software programs that are similar to it, but drummer is insane. I mean, that high, that hi hat pattern or the, the trap is, is drummer. So I just dropped that in. That was the default setting. Okay. Now I'll take out my drums, okay? And that's just a hi-hat. I turned off the kick on, here's the kick. Now here's the snare. Now I can, I can make it follow, um, make it follow this here. So supposedly now it's the drums following. I can add hand claps, cymbals, percussion. <laughs> it's really annoying. And and then it's got this X Y thing, where it's to the left is simple, to the right is complex, to the bottom is soft, to the top is loud, and it's kind of in the top right now towards towards complex. So if I go simple loud, it sounds like this. Still busy. Uh, let me turn. Let me turn this off. Let's see. If I go simp softer, it just gets softer. Same pattern basically. If I go complex and hot, loud, it's <laughs> far right, upper right hand corner. So it's really amazing. You know, you can just kind of <laughs> find what you want. I like to play to a drum beat. Like I said, I like to I like to practice to a groove. I'd rather practice to a groove than to a metronome. Um. What kind of strum machine are you using? A drum machine, you mean? Um, it's it's just it's it's drummer built into Logic. So if you have a if you have a P, if you have a Mac, you can get Logic. Logic I don't think works on PC, and it's a couple hundred dollars, um, but it's probably the most jam packed bargain of a software you'll ever buy so if you're a mac user it's like garage band i mean garage band has drummer in it i think too i'm not familiar with drummer um uh but uh but yeah i'm not using garage band i'm uh oh there's a pared down version of drummer and garage band yeah there you go and garage band is free it comes with a mac i uh, it come it's on your iphone too so if you have an iphone you would have garage band so you could feasibly uh, create drum tracks that way too, and, and export them uh, from your phone to, you know, to another uh, operating system if you wanted to. So, um, uh, so Paul, did you have a question? Anything you want to work on? You're still playing, I'm assuming. How's Mary? Rosemary? Is it Rosemary? Rosemary? It's Rosemary, right? jam packed yeah in fact they, they call them jam packs the uh but that drummer and is not part of a jam pack drummer is a separate software the jam packs are like the uh loop libraries and stuff like that and i generally don't download those because i'm never going to use those although what's hilarious is um a friend of mine uh, uh co-wrote um umbrella by um for rihanna and um they used a they used a, a very simple drum apple loop. Psst, ka, boom, ka, psst, ka, 
it's just like it's like drum loop number one or something if you go if you sort by hip-hop drum loops it's like the, they just dragged that in now they compressed it they kind of messed with it a little bit i think they changed it a little bit but if it's a loop you're good okay paul god bless you but that's the other thing i could go to um like in logic and drummer and, and there's a little thing that kind of looks like a loop and uh, that's where all the loops are. And if I go to instrument, let's see. Um, oh, it's interesting. It's set to 12.8. Why would it be set to 12.8? Give it a second here. Any signature. Okay. Uh, instrument, drums, genre, hip hop, R&B. this one I'm gonna see her pick um I mean I get I get so much inspiration from a good drum beat Anyway, so that's so that's those are loops, thousands of them that come with GarageBand. They also come with, um, I'm sorry, with Logic and, and GarageBand gets a ton of them. And you can buy loop packs, uh, jam packs uh, for like, I think they're 50 bucks a piece or less even uh, for GarageBand and for Logic. But I, it's not generally how I work. I like to create everything from scratch if I can. Um, I'll use a drum loop to start out, but then what I'll do is I'll usually create a, a beat to replace it. Uh, um, but that's, yeah. So it, that's kind of what you're asking, Leo. But it's, uh, sometimes I'll leave the original beat in there. Um, and what I do with drummer, what you can do, because I with drummer, I had a hard time um, bouncing the drummer track uh, because if I wanted to start at zero, you know, bar one, but yet the song doesn't start until bar two. Uh, it's hard to get drummer track unless you do, it's just complex. So what I do is I drag it into a MIDI track using the same drum kit. And it's the exact same pattern, except it's a MIDI. Now I can start it at, at bar one um, and have blank a blank bar going in. But drummer, it's hard. If you drag it back to bar one, it'll fill it all in automatically. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, like I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like, check this out. I mean... Uh, Let's see what, uh, so this is a, is this create drummer region? Okay. So here's a region. Okay. If you can hear that. Oh, it's going to get loud now. All right. Um, but if I drag it like an eighth note, like, so it starts on the end of four. It does a little fill. If I drag it to the to beat four, it'll do a longer fill probably. Yep. So if you, you can, I'll put a click in it. Two, three. If I drag it to beat, uh, the end of three, two, three. Right. But if I drag it to three, now it's going to start playing the groove. I think. Well, maybe not. Okay. Now so a little bit longer. Now I'm going to drag to the end of two. See what it does. Okay, so it's still doing a fill, which is good. Here's the here's beat two, one. Okay, so I was wrong. If I drag it all the way back to bar one, or the beat one, it just goes to groove. If I go to the end of one, one, yeah. It and it did a different fill that time. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm not doing any of that program. I'm just dragging, dragging it to different spots. So it's crazy. Oh God. Yeah, if you have an iPad Pro, any iPad is going to probably come with GarageBand, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I think I deleted GarageBand off my phone just to have more space. Um, because, you know, it's like I'm never going to use GarageBand on my phone. 
I mean, I did buy um, one um, one programming software. Uh, I bought um, bum, 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 bum. what is it called? Mach I Machine for five bucks, I think. And it's okay. I never really used it. Um, I thought I might use it on the road to compose or something, but it's just not. It's just not. It's just not the format. I, I like having a screen and computer and mouse and keyboard and piano and all that stuff. I'm not. I, if I were constantly touring, I, have you seen those rollout pianos? <laughs> that would be something that you know I would probably have if I was touring all the time. If I wanted to keep writing. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to. Well, actually, this is a kind of a cool thing to talk about. Let me let me look at this. This is just a random groove um, within um, within Drummer. This is Darcy, and it's the songwriter. Um, so Darcy and um, the beat preset. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight beat presets presets that I can see. Uh, wouldn't be hilarious if there were like a bunch more, and I just didn't notice. Okay, this one's called Hotel Cafe. It's kick, snare, hi-hat, basically. And this sounds like the... And I'm at B of 90... Boom. Boom. There's a bass. Kick. Kick. So, a couple things I... A couple things to notice. When you're, when you're listening... When a drummer starts playing, a couple things to listen for, for guitar players. Listen to the kick. Listen to the hi hat. Okay, the kick is boom, boom, pretty much. So I'm doing straight eighth notes, but I'm accenting where the kicks are. Uh, the hi hat's doing eighth notes. So if the hi hat were doing sixteenth notes, and I think there's probably a preset here if I change the hi hat pattern to that. Now it's sixteenth notes. You hear that? So now. So that because the drummer went to 16th notes, I would probably go to 16th notes as well on the hi-hat. They're doing that. So those are the two things. Really, even you can even just listen to the hi-hat and take uh, take your and, – and this is huge. This is big information right here, okay? Uh, when I get asked what's the most important thing to learn, um, uh, what's the most important thing to know on guitar, I say I always divide it into two camps. Are you an electric player or are you an acoustic player? If you're an electric player, and again, I was waiting for um, Avito to log in, but he's not here. Uh, but uh, basically what I say with electric players is learn your fretboard. Learn every note on your fretboard. You need to know every note. And that way, when you start to learn theory and scales and stuff, you'll start to see patterns emerge. You'll start to understand what makes up a chord and what makes up a scale and what scales work over what chords and things like that. So that's the most important thing I would work on. Uh, consistently, and then until you have it. Once you have it, you have it. That's a great thing. The thing with acoustic, the, the most important thing for acoustic is have as many grooves as possible. Um, and so it's like, well, well, how do I learn grooves? Where do I get grooves from? Well, because here's what happens. Everybody, you know, somebody goes and does a coffee shop and they think, oh, we've got 40 songs worked up and they play them and they're all the same groove. You're like... Okay, next song is... Next song is. And they're all the same groove, and you're like, your audience is like falling asleep because every song sounds the same. So that's where having a, a, a barrage, a, 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 a lexicon, a, gloss, a lexicon of grooves, right hand grooves, is really, really handy. And it makes helps keep you from getting bored, it gives you things to work on. And so the best source to come up with grooves is to listen to drummers, copy drums from songs or whatever. But then if you got a looper like this, you know, it's just, a, you know, right there, there's a pattern. And uh, the drummer is doing two and three and four and one and two and three. Eighth note pattern on the hi-hat and kick is doing basically boom, 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 boom. Boom or something like that. Okay. Um, now there's all. This is a pattern. The pattern uh, that Darcy is playing. <laughs> Darcy, the robot computer drummer, 
um, it's called Hotel Cafe, which is the name of a place here in L.A. that everybody pretty much has to play at sometime in their career. Uh, but I could change the drum groove. So I, that this is kick and snare pattern number one. I'm not changing anything on the X, Y thing. So this is there's a billion patterns in this drum and in, in drummer. Uh, so I'm going to go to kick pattern, uh, kick and snare pattern number two. Right. The kick change. Boom, boom, boom. So what I've done there is, is I'm, I'm hitting accents to imitate the kick drum, but I'm playing the pattern of the hi-hat. Well, if I went to hi-hat pattern number four, it's 16th notes. Same, same kick pattern. Three. a pattern right there you could use in a song um you might have to slow that one down a little bit or or maybe the eighth note pattern is better um but if you're doing a cover if you're doing a cover then um yeah same group forever uh backing tracks is uh well i like practice i'd rather practice to a to a drum groove than a metronome Backing tracks are when I you say backing tracks, I generally think of having tracks play and then you're you're playing and singing on top of them, uh, and that's not a bad thing. Um, and you can get yeah, you can get many free backing tracks. Um, there's also uh, what's the software the churches use that uh, my daughter actually can program. My son Alex and my daughter Emma can actually program it. Um, and a lot of churches use, you know, all the worship songs that come out now, all the churches release uh, all the backing tracks. So you can actually choose, oh, you know what? We don't have a second keyboard player. So we're going to have these two synth parts played or we don't have an acoustic player. So let's let's enable the acoustic guitar. So there'll be a click and a lot, you know, so you'll everybody's using ears and uh, it really only works if everybody's using ears because you can't really have a click coming through a monitor or, or else the church will hear the click. Um but you'll have in your ears one, two, one, intro, three, four. You know, they'll say intro, verse, chorus, right before it gets the chorus. So you can kind of keep track. If you lost track of where you are, you can kind of keep track. Um, oh, yeah. Well, and and uh, here's the notation for the hip-hop group, Kathy, if you want to take a screenshot. I uploaded it. So it's in the, I think it's Tom's homework or the homework tab on the Discord, which I'll put a link to Discord right now. But that's the boom, boom, tan. that's uh, the pattern that I'm imitating. I kind of created uh, here. Where is it? Where are you? Almost mute. This one here. So Kathy, this is the pattern that I'm imitating. You know, that's, um, ooh, okay, that's, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll post a link to the Discord so you can join that and you can get files and everybody kind of continues sharing and pictures and things like that. Uh, let's see, where where's the, intro? Oh, here we go. Invite people, copy. Isn't this exciting watching me Google? Okay, there we go. So there's an invite. Kathy, if you need that. Um, yeah, well, you know, probably the cheapest entry level Apple product is an iPad, which are great to have around. You can't, you know, you can't have too many iPads. Um, I probably, I don't know what they go for, but you can probably get one. You can maybe buy one used that has GarageBand on it. Uh, for hundred bucks. So, um, uh, but I understand if you're a totally a PC person, that you, you know, some people are anti-Apple. <laughs> so. ah, have I been touching my face? I haven't seen any sips. I guess we got lots of rules here about my, um, 
um, my uh, drinking game rules. If I touch my face, if I you if I say air quotes, if I change guitars, okay. So like if I go back, my twelve string is drop D right now. Um, the uh, oh, uh, let's see, Bruce, you're singing and playing on top is karaoke. Well, singing on top is karaoke, it's different with backing tracks, it just depends. Um, uh, I'm not a fan of using backing tracks, you know, because it kind of takes away your option, even in church context. Now, I've been in situations where there was someone actually running uh, Ableton. Um, and so they, if the worship leader wanted to do another chorus at the end of the song, the guy, whoever was running Ableton could go, okay, they, there would be a, a key command to replace or to repeat the last section so that all those, any, whatever tracks you had, whether it be synths, whatever you had enabled. So let's say your band is kick, uh, I'm sorry, your band is drummer, bass player, guitar player, and keyboard player. But the original track had two keys, four guitars, a bass, a drummer, and a percussionist. Um, you know, it's hard to get that sound. So I've noticed that a lot of the younger worship leaders are so used to doing tracks and using Ableton uh, because their their musicians aren't necessarily as good, uh, you know, good enough to really either either come up with an arrangement, a stripped down arrangement um, that would um, uh, that would work for, um, uh, that would work for, you know, uh, the, the service, uh, cause you know, the better musicians can go, okay. Like if I'm playing, if I hear two guitars, but I'm the only guitar player, I can kind of morph those two guitar parts into one part and kind of play them both in some ways. I mean, it may not be able to be perfect, but I can kind of sell it. Uh, but a younger kid, a younger guitar player may not, may not be able to do that. Um, so they may, I can play the top part, maybe enable the bottom part, you know, the power chords. I'll play the top, I'll play the melody. I'll play that part and then, you know, you can enable the the low part. So it's funny when you, sometimes I'll go to the youth room and I'll see them doing worship and it's like 10 musicians and there's only four people on stage. And that's that's uh, playing along with tracks. That's what I would call it. Karaoke is a different thing. I wouldn't quite call that karaoke. Uh, the but generally nobody in those scenarios is running Ableton. Uh, they're hitting start on it, but they're not going to move around on it because usually it's a drummer and the drummer's too busy playing drums to go ahead and go. Oh, let's do another course. So if they mess up, <laughs> everybody's off, and that's where it gets. It can be a little scary. So. Oh, Kathy, I'm glad you're working. That's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so touch your face. Uh, if I change guitars, if I use air quotes, um, if, I, uh, if I say I had a band in high school called, if I mentioned that I played guitars on Apex Legends, which I did, all the guitars on Apex Legends are me. Um, if I... Gosh, Gary, I don't know. I got the, he, Gary's the Gary's the Moses. He's got the he's got the tablet, stone tablets with all ten. We're down. We're up to ten command sips right now. So no, I don't need royalties. Hold on. You know that's I, that is my business model of the whole royalty thing. Um. Oh, if I drop a pick, that's right. Yeah, Gary's not here today. Um, if I drop a pick. Um, oh, if I leave the room and if I say there will be no quiz on this, uh, that is, that's a celebratory slip, sip, slip. If I say, if I leave the room, that's more of like fill in the gap sip. <laughs> if I touch my face, that's punitive. If I, if I use air quotes, that's also punitive. <laughs> Yeah, drop it the pick, which I haven't done. Oh, if I pick up a guitar and I don't know what tuning it's in, 
See, I told you that this was drop D before I picked it up. Okay. It sounds great. Drop D sounds great on, on 12 string and, and slide too. You you know, it's like got that Bon Jovi. Leo Kaki. I got I gotta listen. I gotta put together a Leo Kaki playlist on Spotify. It'll It'd probably make me want to quit playing guitar, but he's such a great 12 string player. It's such a hard thing to play. So happy together. I love happy together, which is in a minor key that ends on a major chord. So awesome. So 60s. Um, yep. Cheers to Apex Legends. <laughs> Anybody play Apex Legends? Hey, George, good to see you. I don't even have a game console, so I can't play. I don't have a PC. You can play on PC or game consoles, but uh, they told me they're going to, the people that created Apex Legends is going to give me a game console. And I said, oh, great, give me one. And they said, well, wait, because the new one's coming out. There's some new one coming out. They said they want me to have that one. So they're going to give me that so I can play the game. I don't want to be play. I don't want to get addicted to. Um, so again, my, uh, my admonition, my suggestion is to, so I'm going to pull up. Okay. So here I'm back on, I'm, I'm, I'm back on Darcy's drumming here and we were hotel cafe. Okay. So I'm going to, and that was this group. Oh, sorry. Get rid of that. It was the first one was this. Okay. So I'm going to just, there's, there's eight different presets here and each preset will have, you know, eight different kick and snare patterns and four different hi-hat patterns and three different percussion patterns. And then it has a fill thing. You can swing it. You can, you know, it's on, it's really, really very deep. And then of course there's the, there's the X, Y thing that takes you from simple to complex to soft to loud. Um, and I could put it right in the middle so you can hear what that would sound like. I can turn off the click. Okay, so now the so the eight different presets that Darcy has here is Aurora, Clockwise, Dear Diary, Heart to Heart, Hotel Cafe, Lost at Sea, Soul Searching, and Summer Song. So let's see what Aura sounds uh, Aurora sounds like. Aurora. Here's Aurora. Okay, so that's a, a tom pattern. See, I'm playing the hip hop group. Let me get rid of the fills. It doesn't need to be fills on it. I can get rid of the toms and go to hi hat instead. Oh, and the snare wasn't in there. Okay, let's go to clockwise. Here's clockwise. That's symbols. It's got a hi hat. Pretty simple pattern. Here's Dear Diary. Again, toms. I'm not sure why toms. It's swung a little bit. I feel like it. Anyway, yeah, so. And that's so that's Darcy, and then there's other like here's Graham, and his is experimental. So what does this sound like? This one's called nonlinear. Get rid of the fills. So different drum loads. It's got. Yeah, I mean, that's a hard one to kind of come up with a pattern for, but you get the idea. You, it's, just, it's literally, literally endless. All right. So it's been an hour and a half. I got to get going, but I got a, kind of a big day ahead of me. So um, 
Let me, uh, so I will see you all Monday. And then as we, uh, Monday at 11, my time, uh, which is two o'clock on the East Coast, uh, seven o'clock on um, seven o'clock in London. And I don't know what time it is in Sydney, Australia, but it's probably two in the morning. Um, Paul, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. That was very, very sweet of you. I appreciate that. Um, and I will, um, uh, I'll be on discord. I want to, I may start a new series. Um, uh, I know people have been asking about open tuning. And again, like I said, I'm not, it's not my forte. I've, I've, I'm known for it just because those videos are very popular, but the whole reason I think they're popular is because I'm kind of approaching open tuning from someone who doesn't really do it. Um, and that people are like, how do I play an E minor chord in open D, you know, that kind of thing. So I, uh, I kind of sussed it out for people and, and that's why, um, uh, those videos have done fairly well. Um, uh, but I'm happy to talk about that. If that really is something that people are, want to work on, I'm fine with that. Uh, the other thing we, I'm, I, I might be interested in is, is um, chord voicings. I feel like that's, a you know, having good chord voicings is always a good thing to talk about. Uh, but it's also more of an electric thing than an than a acoustic thing. Um, cause generally with acoustic, I always like throwing a capo on and playing standard open voicings if I can. Um, but it just depends if I'm writing pop stuff, maybe not, but anyway, um, well, you're welcome, Bonnie. I don't know if it was a great lesson. <laughs> it was a lesson <laughs> and sorry about this. The Rocky start at the beginning. It just would, it was just spinning. It said going live and it never said you're live. So after about five minutes, I had to give it up. Uh, Jan, thank you. Uh, George, thank you. Good to see you. Paul, again, thank you so much. Uh, oh, Bruce, thank you so much. Um, uh, see you on Discord. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, post the Discord link. Is that the last link I had? Yeah, right here. Here's the here's the Discord. If you haven't joined, that's an invite. Um, I don't know. I saw a couple new people, I think, on here, and we have approached in the 40, somewhere 40 people. So anyway, I will see you. I will see you on Monday. Lord willing. Okay. Take care.